Diamond Beauty. Please remember we are a private group. Please put your name in the front or in the back. Then we can see who is giving us love. But today I still don't have the link to the... Because we went into onto a new system, y, uh, wave dot video, um, I cannot link our private group. So I am back at home. I got I flew back at home today, and my husband said to me, "Can I come and look?" I said, "No, no, I cannot. I am quickly busy with our um, program for this afternoon, but by Sunday it will be correct. I've got an amazing guest." I've got a beautiful guest. I've got a guest that is going to blow you away. I cannot wait to introduce Natalie to all of you. So my beautiful Natalie, are you ready to come into the studio? Yes! Here we go. Well, hello. Hello, my, hello, my beautiful Natalie. How are you? I am great. I am super great. It's a nice, cool morning here in Scottsdale, and we don't get a whole lot of those, so I'm wearing a sweater. <laughs> Feels great. Oh, wow. I, I also, with the new system, there's a, quite a lot of new things around me, so I, I'm going to try and bring us a little bit closer. Just give me one second. Oh, okay. there you are. <laughs> there you are. So, if you can please introduce yourself and then i would love to play your video and then i will also would love to tell the the viewers out there that about the sponsorship and then we will start with your story please introduce yourself um i cannot hear natalie i still cannot hear Okay, maybe I must just go back. Oh, there you are. Yeah? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. My name is Natalie McQueen, and I live in Scottsdale, Arizona, originally from Canada. And I'm a book publisher, and I had a near-death experience about six years ago, and it completely shifted my mindset and now I have a company called Gifts of Legacy, and I help people put their important legacy pieces together. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, my beautiful Natalie. So let me see if I can get us back again. Oh, no, not that one. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> so my beautiful Natalie. I uh, we actually I have corrected your video of uh, two weeks ago, but okay. I'm so I'm so excited to announce that you are going to go forward, Soul of a Diamond. You are going to be our sponsor, and our sponsor is going to be amazing, my beautiful ladies. Natalie is going to sponsor each and every show, and then when we have twenty ladies. We're going to do a book compilation and that is what natalie is going to help us with i am over the moon i mean i told my my beautiful editor Sunay about what what we discussed i cried because it was one of my wish lists to to be able to do this so my beautiful natalie please look at the video and then we can always make some changes going forward so thank you, my beautiful Natalie, for being the Soul of a Diamond TV show sponsor. Here we go. Hi there. My name is Natalie McQueen. I'm the founder of Gifts of Legacy. I am a book publisher and a legacy designer. I am thrilled to introduce my talking journal. This unique journal features recorded messages from a hundred trailblazing contributors that we call our masters and mavens. Imagine a journal that you can hold in your hands and get daily prompts of inspiration from these mentor experts. I invite you to be one of our masters and mavens in our first 
edition on gratitude for $49. This is a low cost, high impact alternative to traditional publishing. I cannot wait to hear your inspirational message. Very and nice. I don't, what, I don't know what happened there because the, you already stopped talking and your voice, I will have to go on what I didn't Oh, no, it. it was perfect on my end. Oh, it was it great. perfect? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was so happy. Can you remember how stressed we were or while you were because you didn't know what did you say and it was a pause <laughs> we could take it out. It's so funny. When I try to do little recorded messages, it, I think because I'm a natural talker, I just, I want to carry on, even though if I've kind of scripted it out. And that day we were, I had to get it to you quickly. And then we were going out with my family. So I said, just give me 15 minutes. I have to record this. And I recorded it. And it took me like 12 times. <laughs> I was laughing. So one of the times I might have said a bad word. <laughs> so I was hoping that wasn't the one that wasn't and cut. It, and it was not. And um, <laughs> I took actually uh, 1.7 seconds from the the first part and 2.7 from the back. So <laughs> I took it off and it made the video exactly as the network wants. Perfect. So my beautiful Natalie. Thank you for being our sponsor. I cannot wait when we have 20 ladies and you will also be part of one of the 20 ladies that is going to be in our first compilation book, Soul of a Diamond. Oh, so my that's beautiful, such a beautiful book. Oh, it's going to be amazing. And we're going to inspire so many people all around the world. So my beautiful Natalie, you can start your story at any point, any time. And then if you, we've got, we've got, um, uh, we've got about four, 50 minutes to go and you okay. can keep on talking. And then when you don't know what is that, I will then ask you a question or two, but I will just want you to come, keep on telling your story as much as you can. May I give it over to you? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> you you can go right. in. Um, as I said, I uh, live in Scottsdale, Arizona, but it wasn't always that way. Um, we grew up in Canada. My husband and I met when we were in the summer of grade eight, and we dated all through high school and all through college, and we ended up getting married, and then um he applied for pharmacy school in michigan so we traveled to michigan lived in michigan for about five years while he went to pharmacy school and then um we had five places to pick from and growing up in cold cold lots of snow weather we said let's go to phoenix arizona where there's no snow <laughs> So the first year we thought we were going to die because it was so hot. When it hit the week we moved, it was 127. Yeah, they were frying eggs on the sidewalk. On the we were listening to the radio station, and they were. So we thought, where did we move? But soon our blood thinned, and um, <laughs> fell in love with the desert. And now, as you can see. <laughs> It's probably like 60 degrees outside and I'm freezing, <laughs> but no, we love it. Uh, we raised our two daughters here and my oldest daughter is a pilot and she, um, she's a flight instructor who flies out of Scottsdale and she's just about got her hours to fly with the big, uh, the big airline. So we're excited for her for that. And my younger daughter is an esthetician. So she keeps coming in saying, mom, we need to work on this, <laughs> pull things back and erase. So I have to make time. <laughs> and she's so busy now, it's hard to get in. So I'm so proud of my girls and we have so much fun together. Um, we, as a family, try to um, carry on traditions that 
we brought from both sides of the family. We, we were blessed that we had um, great families and super traditions, even though our families are different in ways, they're, they're very similar. And so raising our kids, we kind of took a little bit from each family and implemented into making our new traditions and stuff. So as you can see, oh, right here, <laughs> um, I love or we love to decorate. And so we decorate um, for just about everything. <laughs> but Christmas is probably the biggest. And when we decorate, we decorate together and we crank up the Christmas tunes and we get the hot chocolate or whatever you want to drink and just have a good time. So, and I've saved their ornaments that they've made like from kindergarten all the way up. So our tree is crazy. And every year we look back at the ornaments and we laugh at, you know, the little pictures of when they were in kindergarten and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, um, I've always felt that family is so special and that you can learn from other families and bring it into your own family if maybe your family didn't have that background, but you, you appreciate what other families do to bring in them together. And um, about six years ago, um, we went on vacation, um, just my husband and I, his parents and sister and husband. And I, we went to Cuba and I ended up um, having a near death experience and almost didn't come home from that vacation. And that was really life changing. Um, I had been publishing books for years and, and it, it was almost ironic. I look back and it, I think it was God saying, here's the kick in the pants that you needed you need to start writing your books. You need to get out there in front of people and tell your story. And because I was always sitting back and pushing the authors out to do that. And I learned a lot because when authors would be hesitant, I would say, just be authentic, be yourself. You're so amazing. They will connect with you, even though everything isn't perfect or you made mistakes in your life they will connect and go, oh my gosh, I did that same thing. Or, you know, I've had that experience or I know someone. So don't be afraid to tell your story. And then, so when I had this near death experience and just couldn't believe that that happened to me, then I went into gratitude that, okay, God, <laughs> it wasn't my time. Um, so what I'm, what am I supposed to share out of this? What am I supposed to learn from this situation? And what I really got was, number one, I'm not the only one that almost died in their life, right? At a younger age than they were supposed to. And many people going to the grocery store could end up not coming home. And so what that made me realize was those people going through those, those experiences may feel like I felt thankful that it didn't happen, but then in the same token, very, um, <laughs> thinking that you weren't prepared. I think that was the biggest thing on my mind. I didn't have those messages to my daughters. I didn't have that, you know, that final thank you to my parents. And all of that made me think, I bet you <laughs> I'm not the only one that felt this way after a situation like this. So why not share that feeling with the world? and have them not go through a situation like that, but to prepare in case anything happens. And
Okay. Hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> so it took me about two years to really think about how I could help people understand this, be brave enough to share my story, to write my book, and to uh, create my company called Gifts of Legacy. And so over the last couple of years, I've been talking to people about legacy, um, sharing and getting them to think that we are not promised tomorrow. So if you were taking out today or yesterday if 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 today was your last day and um you knew you had say 12 hours what would you do what would you get ready who would you talk to what things would you want to leave maybe in writing um how would you want to spend those last moments or hours and who with who you know and and then that really inspired me to think about what i do on a daily basis and that huh, how many of us okay it says I'm back. Can you hear me? I'm so sorry. We are on battery power. My my husband is going to take out the generator quickly. I am so sorry. Um, I cannot hear you, but you're welcome to continue. I am going to. Yes, I can hear that. you. You can hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, I don't know why it. Keeps remove this iPhone from the Mac. I truly am sorry for this, my beautiful ladies and Natalie. Um, we in South Africa and this, we've got a lot of load shedding and we actually have battery packs but now the battery also kicked off because my i came from cape town and my husband didn't have a lot of power the last 24 hours so the battery didn't reload a lot so next time it did happen you can just continue i will come back i came in in a different route <laughs> so um you're welcome to continue i'm sorry about this natalie Natalie, I cannot hear you. Hi. There you go. There we go. Yes. Okay. I don't know why it keeps clicking off. I see. Okay. So I was sharing with after my near death experience, it really got me thinking about uh, reflecting on, you know, the the regrets that I would have had if I hadn't have lived leaving important messages for my family, sharing, you know, last messages or times together, or just saying thank you to your parents or to you, you know, the people that are important in your life. And so after that, I started my company Gifts of Legacy and wrote my own book. And in my book, I, I really, I shared a little of, of the story um, of what happened in Cuba. But then after I took all my years of personal development and all the trainings that I've gone through and I, um, went through mindset mastery and have, um, a certification in that. So I thought, oh my gosh, all of these things I could put together and share some of my wisdom, share some of the things that this experience really made me realize that I'm not doing or that I could do better. And um, one of the things I was saying earlier is if you only had 12 hours left, who would you spend it with? Uh, what would you leave? What important things would you get together, right? And so sometimes we don't think about those things because we think we're young. We've got years and years. So I don't need to prepare that today. And that's where my, my experience made me realize it could happen to us <clears throat> at any time. 
We're not guaranteed tomorrow. So why not prepare? And if something happens, you will not stress your family out because they'll know what you wanted. They'll know where those important things are. And they know your heart because you took the time to leave messages or writings or a book where they can have a little bit of you after the fact. And um, I know that when we spoke another time, um, you talk, you wanted me to share about um, the celebration of life. And <clears throat> so through this journey, um, luckily I have not had a lot of loss in my life. I still have my grandmother at 104 <laughs> and she's a rock star. Um, but when my good friend Darlene, um, she found out that she had cancer and really tried to fight it and had such a, a wonderful spirit and, um, it was getting towards the end where she accepted that she was not going to beat it. And Darlene was one of these people that if she was in the room, the room was just a little bit brighter and she could make you smile. And she used to work with essential oils. So she smelled so good all the time. And so um, she was just a wonderful person. And I wasn't the only one that thought that. And when her daughter, I was good friends with her daughter, um, said, we're going to have a celebration of life at the house. Um, she'll be hooked up to her oxygen and on the couch comfy, but it's just come and go. And at first I was a little nervous because she was such a strong lady. And to see, you know, know that she's very close to the end, you know, it was kind of a... Um, a little bit scary, and then what do you say, right? Well, this experience really changed my mind because <clears throat> the house was full of people. They had her on the couch, reclined, so she was comfortable, and they had a circle of chairs around her, big circle, probably 15 chairs. And then there was people all in other areas and there was food in the kitchen. You could grab some food. And so you, it was almost like um, you sat in the first chair and you waited because the, the last chair is telling the story of how did you know Darlene? Was there a funny story or, you know, what did you do together or whatever? Oh my gosh, the stories were amazing. I didn't know most of the people in the chairs. And as we moved, somebody else new would come in. And she, this woman was amazing. She had two ex-husbands there. <laughs> and they, they were telling stories of amazing times together, even though their marriage didn't, you know, pan out. Just what a wonderful woman she was and she had nieces and nephews and friends and we all had special stories funny i mean she was just fun to be around halloween she always dressed up really fun and so we all had fun stories to tell and we laughed we cried it was you know it was just and then when you got to the last chair you would get up and you could listen as more people rotated, but it was such, it was a celebration of her life and just the stories and the love in that room were amazing. So that is one of the things that really, I thought, you know what, I would love, like, hopefully that never happens to me, but why don't we take, you know, times uh, a 50th birthday party or something and do that kind of concept. So you hear the funny and um, how you've impacted people's lives and, and you're still alive to <laughs> appreciate it. I yeah. actually have told my husband for my 60th birthday, I want that. Yes. Oh, I will come. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, it's so special, right? So um, after my book came out, it was one of those things where 
Um, I was nervous because I wasn't, I wasn't a writer. I was a publisher. I knew how to do it and do the marketing and get your voice out to the world. And, and we had editors and stuff. So, you know, so at the time I was publishing eight other authors books and trying to write my own and mine didn't have a whole lot of time to write. So I would get up at three in the morning and I would go out. Um, we had a little casita on the front of the house and that was my office. And I would pace back and forth in my office and I would talk into my phone and I would record myself. Now, before I did this, I did a very structured layout of my book. So I knew exactly what I was going to say, but instead of just sitting and writing, cause I would have fallen asleep. <laughs> I, well, yeah, publishing eight other people's books and then trying to write my own. It was like, it was a lot. And, so yeah, I would just record myself and then send it and then put it in a Word doc. And then you would have to go through and correct it and stuff. I always joke that Siri doesn't speak Canadian. <laughs> so some of the words she gets wrong. <laughs> yeah. So that's, so got my book together and um, got it out there. We had a book launch party and it was just amazing. And that was hard for me to really like, go, oh, wow, you know, this is for me. This is because I'm so used to doing it for other people. So that was, that was uh, different, but fun. Um, I had a lady that did charcuterie boards with the cheese and the crackers and uh, the meats. She made meat, uh, little meat roses, <laughs> roses and grapes and nuts and stuff. And she did it in the shape of uh, in these letters. And so it was legacy. So right across my table was legacy and they filled with yummy stuff. So it was really good. Wow. And, and um, a gentleman, uh, my husband and I were on a little date day, uh, up in Flagstaff at the ski hill, but we, it was, it was, um, I think it was in the fall. So there was no snow, but it was cool. So we were sitting outside and they had a um, guy playing the guitar and his name was Seth Brown. And we just listened to his music and it was just beautiful music, beautiful day. We were just having such a great time. And then he played this one song and the song was about legacy. And I thought, oh my gosh, I love this guy. I wonder where he's from. So when he took a break, he came over to our table. He went all around to introduce himself. And so when he came to our table, I said, you wrote a song about legacy. And he said, yes, I did. And um, he had a big family that he was raised in and they sang and just, you know, they had uh, many traditions and stuff. And so I said, do you ever play in Scottsdale? And he said, yes, I do. And I said, would you play, would you come to my house and play at my book launch party? And he said, yes, I will. <laughs> so we had probably about 40 people and wow. we had um, all chairs outside. It was, it was uh, super nice out. And he and his wife, Desiree, um, came and they played songs and everyone had such a wonderful time and it was just a really nice celebration but then guess what desiree wanted to write her book <laughs> so i helped desiree write her book and we published her book the next year so wow. yeah it was it was really fun she's like i've always wanted to write a book and i said you can do it <laughs> yeah so i think one of the things um, that maybe is my superpower is I have the ability to take a new author that's scared to death or unsure and be able to work with them. And I have such a system that takes them through every step of the way and make their, their book into a beautifully published bestseller or even international bestseller and have, um, 
you know, if, if they're a coach or if they have a business on the side, you can really use your book as a tool to share how you work with your clients, why you got into that um, business. Um, and it, it's kind of funny because I, I was always interested in marketing, but not so much book or books, never mind book publishing. And I love Audible. <laughs> I love to listen to books, not so much sit down and read. Because I think, I think for myself, I love having that book in my hand. But if I just sit there, usually at the end of the day, I tend to fall asleep to read. But if I'm listening to it, it keeps my attention. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, give me more. Like, I love it. So I'm always listening to books. Wow. That's amazing. So Natalie, may I please play your video again? <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> may I please play your video again? Sure. Let me go. Hi there. My name is Natalie. <laughs> I don't want to play. Just hold on for me. Terribly sorry. <clears throat> Let me see if I can play the video. Hi there. My name is Natalie McQueen. I'm the founder of Gifts of Legacy. I am a book publisher and a legacy designer. I am thrilled to introduce my talking journal. This unique journal features recorded messages from a hundred trailblazing contributors that we call our masters and mavens. Imagine a journal that you can hold in your hands and get daily prompts of inspiration from these mentor experts. I invite you to be one of our masters and mavens in our first edition on gratitude for $49. This is a low cost, high impact alternative to traditional publishing. I cannot wait to hear your inspirational message. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> now the sound and your mouth was perfect so i don't know what's what's cooking i know that a lot of the uh, amazing uh, hosts on the e360 network has to figure this new system out uh, okay <laughs> so we all went over to this new system the first of this or december the first and yes I was just getting used to one and now we need to do another one. You are welcome to continue talking. And then almost at the end, I would love to ask you a little bit more about this talking um, journal because I, a lot of our beautiful Diamond Beauties wants to be part of this. And maybe we are going to take the whole hundred slots uh, for your first well, edition. Sure. <laughs> I have yeah, a feeling you will. Yes, yeah. you're welcome to continue. And then at the end, almost at the end, I will just ask you that question. Okay, thank you. So I think um, it's really been my passion over the last three years or so to really get my legacy message out. And I want people to think about um, if, if you lost a loved one, and you were going through some paperwork after you know they passed and you found a recorded message or a handwritten message wouldn't that mean the world to you right and i have a story about um 9 11 which happened in the us and it there's a documentary called the the messages um, from the tower and what it, you know what you need your Kleenex box <laughs> beside you your tissue box <laughs> because it's it's such a heartfelt documentary because it it's talking about all the families that got phone calls when the people were trapped in the towers and some people actually got 
to connect with their loved ones and have that final conversation, not knowing, right? But there was so many that it went to the answering machine or it went to a voicemail on, on the phone and they left that last message. And so the documentary interviews the people that have those messages. And do you know, they cannot delete them. That message is kind of that last touch. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so on a, a brighter note. <laughs> Can I just tell you something about that? When that happened, it really impacted South Africa a lot. And that was one of the things on my list to say, as when I get to, to America and New York, this is going to be my place to go and visit. Yeah. It took me 20, uh, I went only in January 2022. Okay. It was still here, you know, goosebumps being yeah. there it was like so holy nobody wanted to talk that still from from when it happened till when i was there it still made an impact on me although i i am not an american right what happened to me was a very big thing for south africa as well but i didn't know about the documentary so thank you so much oh. for telling <laughs> yeah. us about it. but you make a good point right there whether you're American or Canadian, or we, we connect, it doesn't matter our skin color, our hair color, our, how we grew up, we connect that losing someone, caring for someone, wanting the best for our family is the bottom line. So we all have that in common. And that's one of the things um, I created a little, it's not fancy like your show or anything, but just interviews with people talking about, it's called your legacy stories. Because I feel like when you get to know someone, then you can let judgment go away. You can learn the differences of cultures. You can learn the differences of why you eat this and why you don't, why you put up a tree and why you don't, why you do certain things with your family and have um, things a certain way or believe things a certain way, that doesn't mean that everyone should convert to whatever the other. But if we have that understanding and we appreciate that they do that because they think it is best for their family and that they're um, carrying down a tradition or they're creating new traditions, we want the best for our families. We want to... Um, you know, share in love, share in um, that carrying down for generations. So I love that you do this and, and share people's businesses and um, really elevate women. I think that needs to be done more often and that we need to celebrate what women are doing because it's women are strong and we can really use our voices to make an impact. So yeah, I, I'm super excited about that. But after seeing that documentary, that really made me realize that, okay, so yes, get your important documents together. Yes, write a book, write a letter or whatever. But what about taking the time to sit and just put a Zoom on and record or just hold your phone up and record yourself and, have that in a safe place that somebody knows about. That's the key because, you know, we, we say, oh, it's all on my computer. Well, do you know if someone doesn't know your password, Apple's not going to give access. I use an Apple, but they're not going to give access. You can't get in. Um, so the things that the everyday things that we don't think about, it are the important things to document down, you know, and, and how do you want your last days to go? Do you have beneficiaries set up? I work with a company and I can, I can give everyone a free storage account 
um, for storage of videos and um, uh, pictures. And you have to have a beneficiary on the account. And then you can do folders. So say if you had five children, you could do a folder for each child. And if there was a family picture that all five children were in, you can tag and that picture will go into all five folders. Wow. Yeah. And then that child has access to that folder. And so oh. that's just one example how to use that account. But um, taking charge and my motto is don't leave a mess, leave a legacy. So taking charge and thinking about a, are you living your best life? Are you allowing things to, you know, take your time up and not, you know, really living your passion and, and spending time with the people that matter most. Um, and then, so you need to create your legacy. You need to live your legacy and then you need to preserve your legacy. And when you preserve your legacy, there's so many ways you can do it. You, like I said, you can just record yourself Go find your old albums or your boxes of pictures in the garage <laughs> of your kids or family or dog or neighbor or whatever and hold that picture up and talk about what that picture meant or, um, you know, because what the picture means to me may be different for you. And I'll give you an example. My girls love roller coasters. Our family loves roller coasters. So we would go to a roller coaster park and, um, you know, we have all these crazy pictures and we always try to make the funniest faces as you're going down and they snap the, <laughs> the picture. So, so we all have a story or we all have our, um, I guess, view of that day. And so, for instance, when the girls were young and I show them little pictures of when they were two, they'll say, you made me wear that or you gave me a bowl cut, <laughs> right? That's what they see. And then when I see that picture, it's like, oh my gosh, that was the first day that I dressed you up and took you out on my own. And I forgot the diaper bag and I was like a new mom right? So, oh, wow. different. so you could record yourself just looking at old pictures and sharing what you remember, the memories, the meanings. Um, and same with husbands or uh, wives, you know, just if you have pictures of trips together, just recall those because maybe someday you won't remember. <laughs> so, you know, you're kind of documenting your own life as well. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, that's so beautiful. I love your motto. Yes, <laughs> it's true. It, we hear it over and over. Oh my gosh, I wish I would have known that. Yeah. yeah. So do you want me to share a little about my talking journal? Or how about this? Um, I'll share about my journals and then roll into that. Okay, perfectly. Um, one of the things that you mentioned with us is recipes. And oh, I never yes. thought about that because okay. even recipes, my, I yeah. would have loved to have my grandmother's recipes. It was like, I'm yeah. not the chef, but just <laughs> to have it. Just yeah. to have it. So. Yeah, one of the things we do um, is a legacy res recipe book. And it doesn't, it can be a family or it can be a group of friends. Uh, because think about this. Um, now, we call it potlucks. And I love that you said you, you hadn't heard of that. But um, in, I think, US and Canada, for sure, um, call it potlucks. And that's when everyone comes and they bring their favorite dish. So if it's, you know, um, say uh, Thanksgiving, everyone brings a different, like a side dish, a salad, a main dish and dessert. And so you get to taste everyone's, a little bit of everyone's. And then usually you go, oh my gosh, this is so good. Can I get this recipe, right? 
and you appreciate their their recipe and i my mother-in-law is a wonderful cook and i have carried um down some of her recipes and my uh, some of my friends have said oh my gosh can i get that recipe and i've shared it so now it's part of their family so yeah if you have um you know a bigger family and you want to reach out to your aunts uncles grandmothers um nieces and nephews and and pool all those recipes together we can do it in different ways we can just put the recipes or we can put a picture of the person and the recipe or we can put the picture of the person the recipe and the video of them actually making the recipe all in oh. a nice cover book <laughs> wouldn't that be beautiful if it's your grandma's it's famous so cookies and someone's videoing her, you know, mixing it up in the bowl. Yeah. Wow. That would be incredible. Incredible. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah you're so, welcome to tell us. Thank you. Okay. Um, when, um, when I was thinking of legacy products to help people start leaving their legacy, I thought journaling. And I, I went deep into journaling myself. And then I heard uh, or read an article that talked about all the benefits of journaling. And journaling is so powerful and can really help you be creative, can help you be more mindful because sometimes when you're writing and then you realize, oh, maybe I was a little harsh there <laughs> or, you know, or if you realize that, you know, you're working on goals and maybe when they're written down in front of you, you're like, is it really a good goal to publish nine books in a month? No, <laughs> that's not realistic. So there could be little things that as you're writing down and it helps you grow as a person, it helps document your life, it helps um, you get your heartfelt messages out, it helps you brainstorm on projects and have that time to just reflect. So there's many, many um, benefits of journaling. So I created a whole line of journals. I think I have about 30 different journals. I have journals for mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers. And then I have gratitude, daily gratitudes, and today's gratitudes, and all nice colors and, and different looks. So when I had a few people um, write down uh, a message at, or email me and say, I love my journal. It is so pretty, but I don't know what to write in. What should I write every day? I just sit there and I look at the blank pages. And so I've talked to some people that have said similar things. And I thought, okay, so obviously not everyone um, feels comfortable with journaling. So how could I help them? So I thought about doing a little journaling course. I thought about doing some, you know, blogs or something about journaling. And then I thought, well, it just happened the the next day I was going to a women's conference and I was looking around the room and there were so many amazing women in the room. And I thought every one of these women have a business are making an impact in their business on other people. They have the messages to share. So I thought, what would it look like if one of my journals came alive and had somebody talk at the top of the page and you could see who it is and you could see what they, you know, what their company is and how to get hold of them if you really connect with them. And then you scan that little code and you see them open up and they share that message with you of inspiration. So our first journal is going to be on gratitude and I want the diamond beauties to fill it. And so every journal has a hundred messages um, from, well, a hundred messages from a hundred different people sharing an inspirational two to three minute message. And then they will ask you a thought provoking question. And that's what you can write about that day. 
So there's no more, what should I write about? You've got the experts that I'm surrounded with every day sharing their stories, sharing their wisdom, sharing, you know, their heart centered messages out to you. So you're inspired and then they give you something to think about. (laughs) Oh, I don't have my glasses here. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> we are so excited i was in cape town and we were talking i had i met quite a few people and we were telling the ladies also about it and they say yes they will join the diamond beauties just to be in this amazing project uh, of course so we are so we are ready when you ready Please tell us when to start, what to do. Okay, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. It's going to be tonight, tomorrow, or early next week. We are on the last, um, you know, the the last little things putting it together. It's such an amazing platform. This gentleman that is helping me, he's from Australia. I've known him for, gosh, oh, probably six, seven years, and we laugh so much because he said he goes this idea is brilliant and i said and and i love his accent i didn't understand what he said (laughs) and (laughs) so we we kind of brainstormed it together and he goes i can build you the most amazing platform for this and so we we were in talks for a while and then we framed it out and then he took all my framing because I'm such a planner and I love mind maps. So I showed him everything I had and the verbiage. Um, and he's like, yeah, we can put something together that is so unique. And the other night he said, I have looked cause we've been doing this for months and um, it's taken longer than expected, but we see all the little tweaks. And right now we're doing the very final Um, pricing for the international shipping of the journals and so that's our last step Um, but he said you know this is shark tank this is shark tank material (laughs) and I said really so wouldn't that be cool but no uh, so being in the very first one would be so special Oh, it's going to be, and we are going to be trailblazers, my beautiful one, uh, our diamond beauties. But we've got two minutes to go. Can I please, I didn't, um, I've got, I've written a song for Soul of a Diamond. And I have not got the singing part right yet. But this uh, Dr. Michael Alexander will read this. So this is from my heart to you for to say thank you for being Soul of a Diamond. Here we go. from here to there between the star and the moon's soft glare capture a glimpse of light so rare radiant and shining our hearts declare for the world to see in love's grand affair moments of our lives that are filled with laughter keep us going hearts thrilled capture the essence of who we are in the spirit of a child like a shooting star moments to share our true stories so bright not only for the world to heal, take flight, but to remind us how amazing we are. Forever moving forward, a radiant star to create magic near and far. In the radiance of each heart's soft glow, we find the strength to carry on and grow. Shining bright, our love doth show in every moment, from dusk till dawn's soft flow. Radiant hearts. I'm gonna stop it there because it's beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, are there some ladies that have given us some love? So um, I must just get the right thing. I will get this thing under my knee soon. <laughs> um, so now my beautiful editor, Catherine, I spent time with her. She says this is super exciting. So my beautiful Natalie, we cannot wait. We are all excited for this thank well, you thank for you so much i couldn't year. imagine having a better group of women be oh, as yeah. my very first one thank you we've got one minute to go do you have got a message for all the beautiful ladies out there that is watching this show and will be watching the show 
Sure. I would say, you know, this is the time of year to really reflect on your life. If you're living the life that you really want to, if not start journaling, start putting down that life that you want, your goals, your dreams. I call it your legacy list. It's like a bucket list, but beyond what you want to be remembered for, how you want to impact people and then start putting little steps in play to start creating your life, living your life, and then take time along the way to preserve your life. I love it. So my beautiful Natalie, thank you for being here. My beautiful thank Diamond Beauties, thank you for being here. And all the ladies all around the world on the platform, the network, and also the extended network, thank you so much for viewing this today or in the replay. We want to wish you all a beautiful day. Please look after yourself. Smile often. And I know I'm sitting down, but keep <laughs> on dancing. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>